Good afternoon everybody, good to have you joining with us today for just a testimony. This gentleman beside me is Harold Vaughan, he's a preacher from America and I first heard you brother about 25 years ago at a, wow. a faith mission convention in Bangor and I've listened to you many many times on cassette tapes and CDs uh, since then. So just in the providence of God we've met here, we're in Newcastle County Down doing a wee bit of uh, work together for the afternoon and I just asked Harold to just tell us something about yourself, brother, how you get saved, and something of your burden for revival sure. as well. So, Great. Leave it to you. Well, you. fantastic. I grew up in uh, Southside, Virginia. Uh, my father was 46 when I was born, so I was kind of late to the game. I grew up in the country. I was raised on a tobacco farm, uh, which you don't need to lecture me about the evils of tobacco. I already know them all. And I don't want anything to do with it, but I grew up in the country. I went to a liberal denominational church where we got the Ten Commandments, but we never heard the gospel. I never heard about being saved or born again or forgiven or anything like this. Uh, I was 14 years old, 14 or 15. I went to a public high school. I heard I went to a gospel movie. And a fella got up at the end of the movie and he said, um, he said, God loves you. He said, Christ died for your sins. You can find peace with God by receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior. Well, I've never heard anything like this. And uh, they gave an invitation, an appeal uh, to respond publicly. Well, I was too scared to do that. So after the appeal was over, I snuck down to the inquiry room. And uh, he went through the whole thing again. He said, God loves you. Christ died for your sins. You can find peace with God by receiving Christ. Well, I called upon the name of the Lord. They gave me a gospel of uh, John. I went home and read chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, got to the Nicodemus part. You must be born again. It's like the Spirit of God came beside me and said, Harold, this is exactly what has happened to you. You've been born again. Well, I knew nothing. I had no scriptural knowledge. I mean, I mean, no knowledge, okay? Like zero. Mm -hmm. So that began my quest for, for the Lord. Uh, they put me back in the liberal church, which was a big mistake. And uh, I spent three years listening to the radio, reading books, trying to learn. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a Bible preaching church. People say, well, Harold, you came from the Bible Belt. In the south, there is no Bible belt. It's a church belt where I come from. And people don't, don't go to church to meet with God or spiritual things. They go out of social, cultural, and family obligation. So anyhow, I finally found a church, or it found me. It started up an independent church, and uh, started as a Bible study, turned into a full-fledged church where they preach mm -hmm. the gospel, like heaven and hell, Jesus saves, and Man alive, people begin to be born again. And that was, that's kind of where I started. That was the beginning of my journey uh, uh, with the Lord. And it was exciting in those days. I mean, we were full of zeal. I mean, we prayed the house down. I mean, we, we were seeking God as best we knew how. But we were zealous for, for souls. And, and then we began to have meetings. In our country, they called them revival meetings, which... That's really a bad way to put it. We hope they turn into a revival meeting, but that's what they would call them, mm. just as a cultural slogan, I suppose. Well, some of these meetings, uh, God showed up, and uh, man, people got born again back in those days by the scores, and the, and the glory of God would fall, and we would meet the Lord and repent and get right with one another and get right with God and get right with mom and dad and all this kind of stuff. And so there was a hunger in my heart for revival. I got a hold of Leonard Ravenhill's books, uh, Tozer books, Andrew Murray books, Duncan Campbell books, revival books. And in our country, it was, it was, it was common to have these kind of meetings for spiritual quickening and awakening. And I remember as a teenager, some of us, we would drive 200 miles one way just to get in the presence of God. I, I mean, it, it was like incredible back in those days. There was such a spirit of, and an appetite for sp spiritual things on the behalf of not all, but, but very, very many. Yeah. And there were these kind of meetings. Uh, Roger, we call them revival meetings. That's what they call them, yeah. which I don't like that name, but... But praise God, when, when God shows up and shows off, that's a touch of God. That's a move of God. Mm -hmm. That's a revival. And they were very common. So my heart was filled with um, anticipation. And uh, 
as a young person, uh, I would watch this evangelist on television preaching to thousands, and I would say, that's exactly what I want to do. So I went off with the intention uh, from high school to Bible college uh, with the intention of being what I called an evangelist. As it turned out, probably more of a revivalist, but uh, mm. nevertheless, itinerant, uh, going around speaking. And that's kind of my testimony, and one thing's led to another, and here we are 42 years later, uh, still preaching Christ and still believing God for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brother, thank you so much, Harold, for your ministry and for your fellowship today. Forgetting to know you, it's lo lovely just to spend that time with you today, and I trust God will continue to bless you richly and send a revival in these right. days that we're living in. So, Amen. friends, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Share this with your friends and loved ones. Send it on to other Christians and let's catch the fire for a move of the Spirit of God. God bless you, friends. See you next time. Thank you, Harold. Amen. Thank you, brother. Amen.